And we are happy to welcome to TVO, father and son. That's John O'Toole, the MPP for Durham on the right, and Aaron O'Toole, the MP for Durham on the left. And yes, you heard right. Two gentlemen, father and son, representing the same riding at the same time. And I guess that's a first in Canadian history. Is that right? That's what I hear. You that's know, what I, you hear. I, I definitely hear that. Well, let's go through this for a sec, because I know Eleanor and David Kaplan right. were both in public life, but different ridings. That's right. And we know Jim Flaherty and Christine Elliott are husband and wife, representing the same riding at right. different levels at right. the same time. And we know the McGinty brothers, Dalton exactly. and David, David yeah. are representing the same riding, but they're brothers. Mm -hmm. But you're the father and you're the son, and I don't think that's ever happened before. Well, it should be the other way around, Steve. It should be the father's federal and the son's provincial. But because the, the well, son has the senior job and that's just wrong. Exactly, I'm working for or, my son. Or yeah. the, the son learned so much from his father that each generation has to uh, make that next leap, right, Steve? So <laughs> I right. see, I see. Well, let's go through some of the history here. Uh, you first ran in the 1995 Common Sense right. Revolution election mm -hmm. of Mike Harris. Right. What got you into politics in the first place? Well, I, I was always involved on library boards and school boards and, and parent-teacher councils and uh, I was actually first elected in 1982 as a, a school trustee. Okay. So I went through the various steps, not in a partisan way, just because it's being engaged in the community. And uh, ultimately in 94, I was uh, asked to run by different dignitaries who I respected. Former mayor and the first regional chair, Walter Beeth and Garnet Rickard were the two people uh, amongst a few others that asked. And uh, I wasn't even a member of the party, but some of the things were, you know, I was on the region of Durham uh, at that time and uh, knew that the province, I'd met Floyd Logren and uh, he was the treasurer that was going through a lot of trouble and uh, that sort of gave me some, that somebody has to step up and do something and that's when I took the leap of faith. And Aaron, did you work on that campaign? Uh, I did. I was in the military at the time, so I had just graduated from Royal Military College and I was at my first posting in Trenton, which just happened to be down the road uh, from Durham, the riding. And it was my first political experience as well. So, um, you know, I was a volunteer on his campaign. Certainly with his work uh, in the community, I'd grown up in a household that public service and community service was first and foremost. You know, I would skate or swim in, in facilities that dad helped with many other members of the community build. So that was sort of my grounding and why why really I joined the military, uh, another form of public service, and uh, I was able to volunteer on his campaigns and got a bit of the, the political bump. Well, that's what I want to find out. When he was knocking on probably twenty or 30,000 doors in the riding, were you going with him? A lot of days. Uh, what did you in, learn doing that? Uh, I learned a lot. In 95 and 99 particularly, uh, Dad would pretty much sprint between doors, and uh, we all used to joke it was just a workout keeping up with him. And I, you know what I've always admired about my father is um, he would hear, he was there to listen as much as to give um, the, the, the policy positions. And that's probably the biggest learning I've taken is you're on the doors to listen as much as you are to give your message. And how old were you in 1995? I would have been in my early 20s. You're 21. 21? Yeah. Was yeah. there a seed that got planted in that election where you thought, maybe I'd like to try this myself someday? I think, to be honest, election night, I'd followed politics, as I said, growing up in his household, and I was interested. He had never really belonged to a party, um, so we didn't have that affiliation, even though sort of philosophically we were sort of traditional conservative type folks. And uh, the election night, um, I was actually, uh, he did so well as part of the Mike Harris sweep in 95 that I was out taking signs down 10 minutes or 15 minutes after the polls closed. And he was declared, and that was a pretty special, special mm -hmm. evening. Yeah, there was a change of government, uh, third place to first place. Mike Harris won, and my father won. And um, that remains sort of a, a night that I thought one day I might put my name on a ballot. Do you remember that night in 1995? And more importantly, remember watching him that night and yeah, seeing how well, it had an effect? It all sort of fits together. Lots of the previous victories, whether it's as a school trustee, we campaigned for all of those things, not in a partisan way, but to you know, get to know what the issues were on the street. And uh, I do recall his support. In fact, if you, he will, on the nomination, he was still a, an undergrad at RMC, at the military school, and all his friends came down. And we had the most fantastic show because of all of these nice young people in uniforms and playing the bagpipes. And we had quite a show and uh, to win the nomination against five or six other people. And uh, that, that's when I think the real bug came in, because it is exciting. And it's exciting for young people if they see that there's fun in it in terms of the public service part and the 
ideology conflicts kind of spoil it a bit in a way. They're engaged in as close as possible and meeting ministers and other people that are in decision-making roles. And I, I think that's where he sort of uh, met some of the people that came down to support me, Elizabeth Whitmer and others that supported me. And I, I think it's an inspiration. These people do contribute to the public dialogue and hey, it's nice to meet them. Did you at any point, I should just do the background here, Bev Oda was the member for your riding. She stepped away for reasons we don't have to get into if you don't want to, but uh, anyway, she got into some trouble, decided to step down, uh, created a by-election, you decided to run. Yeah. And I guess I want to know, did you go to him and ask his advice on whether to run or how to run before you actually signed up? Oh, absolutely. Um, my first phone call after somebody called my office that morning and say, Bevota just resigned. The first call was to my wife, of course. Um, but very quickly after, I called my father. Because, as I said, it was always something I thought I'd do, but we have young children, and I certainly thought there was many more years for that to happen. But as, uh, as we all know, and, and you've interviewed and written some wonderful books on this subject, timing in politics is critical. What so, made you think this was the right time? This was the right time because I think in the circumstances of uh, uh, the former MP's departure, I think the party needed a, a strong local candidate um, to carry the banner. There was a great message on how Canada's doing economically compared to the rest of the world. We just needed to get past the reason for the by-election. And uh, my, my phone rang solidly for the next few days after the resignation, but talks with my wife and, and with my, my dad on how, how best to approach this. What did he tell you? Uh, he told me, uh, he gave me about 12 names of people that he trusted in terms of their position in council, you know, not on council, but their advice to him, because it's a large riding that my dad has held, and now I represent uh, federally from Uxbridge to Port Perry Scugog to growing Clarington. Um, you don't know everyone, you don't know every nook and cranny. So he gave me 12 names of people, he said, listen to these people. And, and get their perspective, go meet them. And I think that was terrific advice, particularly running in a nomination. John, I wonder if you, did you urge him to run or did you dissuade him at any point from running? Well, when he was practicing law and was in Toronto and that, and he moved to the community five or six years ago, I guess, Aaron. Yeah. And uh, I told him that, you know, it's family first. And I really believe I had a 30 year career at General Motors and I was still engaged in my community as you play ho uh, old timers hockey. I play uh, being involved in various things and uh, hockey as well. But, uh, uh, and that's kind of what I said to him. I said, don't, he's a good young family. But when the door opens up, Steve, and the opportunity, as you've said in many things, you either move or you don't. Someone else will come in for the next 10 years and occupy that opportunity, either to, as the candidate or as the candidate of record. So I should tell you this, in 94, Three ninety four. I was asked to run along with Flaherty and those people, and uh, uh, you know, Bev Oda was my campaign manager. I was very mm. instrumental in bringing her into it. A very ethical person. At the time, she had just resigned from the Lake Ridge board. But I say that only because I said to Aaron, "Think hard because it consumes your life. It's not a job. It's a way of life, mm. and it's a partnership with his wife as well. And my wife, Peggy, is you might know is." Uh, retired teacher, now she's an elected school trustee. So there's a father, son, and wife who are, and, and she's doing it because there was nobody's name on the ticket to run as trustee. So hmm. I said, you can't stand by, and, and, uh, and she's still engaged. So I'm tempted to ask about Peggy's view on Bill 115, the former teacher, <laughs> now trustee, but we'll leave <laughs> yeah, that for we'll another program. <laughs> Aaron, I do want to, uh, I have to pick up on this a little bit here, because Bev Oda worked with you, and of course you replaced her, hmm. and the last thing that Unfortunately, most people know about Bevoda are, you know, $15 glasses of orange juice and staying in five-star hotels and all of that kind of thing. And I wonder if at any point you were concerned when you thought about running for this position, whether you would have to wear that, explain that, have that be a part of your campaign, all of that business. Well, Steve, I, I chose as my nomination slogan, um, accountable, accessible, and professional. And then what I tried to do was get out, I worked tirelessly to get that message and to show my track record, uh, particularly my track record in the military, in the private sector, uh, a lot of charity work I do, you know about some mm -hmm. of it. Um, but when you went to doors, did people want to talk it, to you about this? It would come up, yeah. and that's where I would have to say, look, I'm running on my record. You have, a, you have good reason to have some concerns, 
Um, and what I'm saying is give me your trust. These are, this is my track record, and this is why I'm running. And the first couple of weeks, it came up a lot. And, but as my position and my experience and other things came out, uh, it, it, it went away Mo for the most part. My biggest advantage was the man beside me because people had seen his tireless work and particularly local focus on issues for many, many years. So well, that's I what I want to pick up on. Did you work on his campaign? No, I didn't, Steve. I sort of helped on the weekends. I was elected. I felt there was a, an impression that people see this as a bit of a conflict, and so I, I did signs on the weekend. On the very last day was the only time he and some of his friends that, uh, from all over Ontario, really, and Canada, for that matter, came down, and we did go out, and we had some pictures taken. Because of the, the reason of this show, I'm so proud of Aaron and so proud of how he's made these decisions and sort of independent of me uh, many times since uh, he was 17. So I would say that uh, I was involved all the way, kind of every night I would be, Aaron, who have you talked to today? What are you doing? <laughs> he probably seldom, seldom called me back because he was <laughs> open until 9 and 10 at night at the constituency office. But they ran a great campaign. He had great people helping him. And uh, I'm really uh, an informed observer. The, the last door extent. we knocked on election day, we were still knocking hundreds of doors, getting our vote out. We had our vote identified. The last door I knocked was with my father. Now, that was the only day we actually knocked together. Mm -hmm. But that was a nice way to close off the door-to-door -door canvas, which, which was our focus in the campaign, was with, with my dad, where I'd learned to canvas from him in 95. But you did the, your dad did just touch on something, which is, is it harder to be seen as, quote, unquote, your own guy when you are clearly, you know, the second generation of, and he's paved the way for the last 18 years in many respects? It, it certainly, it, the goodwill and respect my father has, it was certainly something uh, I was thankful to have. We both thought that, um, my time was down the road and I, I never really thought I'd run at the same time that my father was was a sitting member. Um, I actually think it's a very big positive for our for our area um, but uh, the sudden resignation led to me running a few years before we might have thought about it as a family and and here we are as you said uh, the first uh, father and son combo and I think it's 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 a good way to to show that we're a committed family to to the community, much like there's sixth and seventh generation farming families, we're a family that just has roots and are committed to our community. There, there may be some people, and I, I go back to the um, the Kaplan story again, where right. Eleanor Kaplan was an MP, yeah. David Kaplan, her son, was an MPP, and at one point, Eleanor's husband, Wilf, That's looked right. into running as well, and apparently, a lot of the feedback was so negative, such as. You, you've already got two Kaplans yeah. in public life, yeah, don't know. you think that's enough, that he stood down and didn't run for a nomination. Did you hear any of that in this story here? Well, I, I no, I did not hear it directly, but in my own uh, view of the politics of it all, Steve, I, I worried that I could be an advantage because of name recognition, but a disadvantage is, well, is there no one else suitable or whatever? And, and you're right, it's something out of respect. That's one of the reasons I stayed out, uh, is because he's a very capable and accomplished individual and he has characteristics that exceed mine and skill sets as well and people would see that that's why I stayed out of the picture quite mm -hmm. frankly uh, Steve uh, it's, a, it's a very subtle nuance of the campaign but uh, I it was like this as the as the as the wanting father uh, I was just so overcome by it all now, now I can tell you that at some point you're the proud father but at another point you may be a little competitive, you two. I'm guessing that you are. You're from that kind of family. So I wonder whether the two of you, for example, have got a bet going on who gets into cabinet first or something yeah. like that. Aaron? <laughs> that, that, that particular thing hasn't come up, but you know, we, we uh, are passionate Irish Canadians, and my dad and I don't always agree on every position. And what every, do you disagree on? Uh, we, we, I think, I'm a little more of a market-focused uh, guy. Um, and probably more of a private sector, public-private partnership type guy than, than my father. Um, sometimes we'll disagree on a range of issues, but we always have a very good discussion about it. Uh, I don't view that as much as competition, more as... Uh, generational. Yeah, generational. And you have to sort of, you have to be able to stand your ground, and it's well, like any father and son. You're not exactly a red Tory, though. I mean, you're both... Well, you're I've both been defined by others uh, differently. I run and win locally, Steve, because I do represent my constituents effectively and have for like 30 years 
And so I think I am a team player as well. I'm not offside with, uh, you know, all of the leaders we had. I admire those people that because they give their life back to public service. And so I'm not just trying to soft sell this. Uh, I care about people. And what I've learned in 30 years, Steve, is there is no right answer in politics. There's no perfect ideology. Everyone that's running, whether it's NDP or whatever, you know, liberal, they all want the best for Ontario. They just see how you get there differently. Mm -hmm. And when you look at today's world, you need to be young, smart, and engaged and informed. And not that the other generations weren't, but it's very quick. I watch your show every night, and I see the nuances of the economy, of globalization, and the merging of values and, and society. It's, uh, they need a new generation. I always say to people in our speeches, we were at the opening of a bank, our first formal event, and of course, they made a big fuss out of Aaron. And, the newest MP for Ontario, blah, 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 all this stuff. And Aaron casually said, well, perhaps my father would say a few things. Ooh, I, I, that was really a... But I said, now that's the new improved version. So <laughs> that's the story as it is. Uh, I'm not done with this competitive angle, though, if you don't <laughs> mind, because you got elected in a by-election in 2011. You got elected in a general election in mm. 2011. Do you know who did better? Did you check the numbers? Well, I was I was 2012. But, oh, you're 2012. Uh, yeah, Excuse me. Yes, 2012. That's right. yeah. um, I did better now. <laughs> you know that, eh? You I checked. have not eclipsed his marks, though. He he has uh, hit your highest. You hit a high watermark of 64 percent. I think was my in highest. In the Harris. I think. Uh, okay. Well, so I don't think I, I would think only I was dream 51. about. I'm always in, around that in, number. In your last election, John O'Toole, the father, mm -hmm. you got 49.1 percent. Okay, 49.1. And in your 51. last I'll election, him, I'll give him some tips. You Steve. got 50.72. Yeah. So you were about one percent better. Yeah. So do you get bragging mm -hmm. rights? No. <laughs> and, and, for the, and for the reason I said, the you know he. He hit some levels um, in '95 and '99 that are that are incredible. Um, in part because of his local track record, he'd been elected before, but it was also a sea change in large swing elections. And uh, I I would only dream of, of uh, hitting well, those heights. That's the deal, though, in a swing and a wave. You know, and members come in that only have one or one ter or two terms, perhaps. And I'd won when our leaders uh, or the party itself lost. And that, to me, was the most uh, reassuring that I was on the right track for the style of politics for me is stay focused on what the local issues are, bring those to Queen's Park to the table, and make sure that my constituents understand the motives for some of the things mm -hmm. that are going on. And I, I think it's a very practical workman type of way of doing the job. Federally, it's at a much higher level. They're looking at the sort of the, the macro view of the world, and we're kind of the micro level. You know, how you implement these things that the federal government uh, force on us in many occasions. We've got a couple of minutes left here and I want to give each of you a minute to complete the following sentence. John O'Toole, you first. My time in public life, however long it lasts, will have been useful if what? If we win government in the next general election provincially. Which will be? I would say we'll probably have a year, a year, within the year 2013 something should happen. Okay. Aaron O'Toole, your time in public life, which has just started after all, however long it lasts, will have been useful if what? If uh, I have the respect of my, my family, my, myself, my opponents, and of course my father. That's a lovely place to leave it. <laughs> John and Aaron O'Toole, the MPP and MP for Durham, both conservatives, small c I might add. <laughs> Uh, thanks a lot for coming into TVO tonight. Thanks very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.